Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank where I climb the online VGC 20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. Today we're trying out a brand new team. This team was built by James Beck, and he was able to actually climb to number one on the ladder on stream yesterday with this. So first of all, if you guys don't follow James already, definitely give him a follow. I've linked his Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube in the description below. He's one of the best VGC content creators around. He makes really, really good content, and he's just one of the best players in the world coming off a top four finish from the World Championships last year. So congratulations to James for accomplishing number one on the ladder. And what's really interesting about this team is a lot of it isn't even really new stuff. This is a team Pokemon wise you totally could have seen in series four, but of course you got a couple of tricks up your sleeve here with Lash Out on the Tyranitar, Scorching Sands on the Charizard, and then an Assault Vest Venusaur, which I think is really interesting with Weather Ball. So uh, Citrus as well with the Yawn Body Press set on Torkoal, so not the conventional Torkoal set. So a lot of cool things on this team, and I think you know it's no surprise to me that james was able to take this team to number one because there are a lot of non-conventional sets right for example tyranitar has focus sash instead of weakness policy venus Thor has the assault vest instead of you know, what you typically see on it whether it be focus sash or wide lens or even life orb uh, gyarados is just a pokemon you don't see very often nowadays uh, even though we were using it on the previous team uh charizard with scorching sands also i think very interesting and then finally once again a torkoal without eruption but instead this body press yawn set that's very disruptive so eager to try out some games with this and yeah guys go check out james once again he is linked in the description below with us having two potential weathers on this team and us using a bunch of weather teams up until this point i am curious so the question of day today is how would you actually design a brand new weather in pokemon um i really like asking these kind of like theoretical questions because you guys give some really good insights into all of it and i think the idea of you know design in pokemon is super interesting it's tough to do properly so i'm always curious about how other people value you know uh, or see what people value basically in the game so let me know in the comments below and as always if you guys enjoy road train please share your support by leaving a like in the video i'd really appreciate it once again i very very much uh appreciate everyone coming out and watching the content in the last month you know it's actually already been about a month of series five which is really crazy but i uh, just makes me happy to see so many people come out and watch road to rank so i appreciate you all thank you for consistently coming out and tuning into the content and i uh, hope everyone's doing well so let's look for our first opponent of the day um, I think this team I'm just eager to try out mainly because I think Sun is just so scary to see in team preview. Like we went up against GMAX Venusaur yesterday, right? And it just feels really, really powerful, especially in best of one. So first game of the day, we're going up kind of against a very hyper offensive team here. As you can see, there is Tailwind and then you kind of just try to sweep through with some of the strongest attackers in the game in Porygon and Cinderace. And then you've got Urshifu as well. So... My opponent doesn't have great fire resist, so ideally, if we set up Trick Room, Torkoal's Heat Waves and Body Presses will do a lot. Um, here's the problem, right? I can't just go Torkoal Venusaur, because my opponent can pretty easily shut that down with, like, Whimsicott plus something. So the question is whether they predict my, like, Trick Room route, because if they do, you could lead, like, Indeedee, for example. Um... So if I'm afraid of Indity, I don't know, I could go like Dusclops and Charizard. The idea behind this is turn one I can switch out uh, if Indity's out on the field and just try to KO that. It's so, like Dusclops, Charizard, I definitely want Torkoal in this matchup. I saw this Venusaur is interesting, but how good is it really here? I guess the question is what would I bring over it? Gyarados doesn't really do any damage here, as well, similar to the Gyarados we were using in um, in the last team. So it's between Tyranitar and Venusaur. Tyranitar is a little bit better under Trick Room. And it has Focus Sash. And a single Rock Slide could actually be really valuable here. So let's go with this route. I haven't really seen how James plays with this team, so I would highly recommend anyone who wants to play with this team to watch his VODs from his Twitch streams, um, because that will give you better insight onto how to really properly play with this team, but I'm eager to try it out, and I think, uh, once again, if you're able to get to number one on the ladder with this, it's clearly a very consistent team. It's gonna be Whimsicott and Porygon. Okay. Uh... So what's interesting here is you could either Tailwind Max Strike, Salic Berry... Huh. I don't think I've seen one of those ever on a Whimsicott. That's interesting. Uh, like, you know actually what the safe play here is? It's, I think, to Trick Room and Heat Wave. Hmm. 
It's just that taunt's relatively obvious here, right? But my opponent, instead of going for taunt, might just go for a max strike onto Charizard. I guess the safe play is taunt and then max strike. Mm. I'm just going to go for a Trick Room and a Heat Wave. Because I'm going to outspeed the Porygon if they don't Tailwind turn 1. Porygon should Dynamax here. And if they Tailwind Max Strike, we just win off that. Surely they must have Taunt, right? So I think I maybe could have predicted this and gone into Torkoal and Heat Waved instead. But if my opponent actually commits to Tailwind, then we are in excellent shape. It's just so risky to Tailwind here, right? I guess you could actually have... Ooh, Max Phantasm. I didn't think about that one. Ooh, with Helping Hand coming out, I think it's actually definitely going to be Phantasm coming out. Although, this is actually maybe fine, right? We KO Whimsicott, even if you KO the Dusclops, I get a free switch in into Torkoal. And Charizard's going to beat the Porygon with relative ease. Okay, it's Max Darkness. Sorry, I meant Darkness over Phantasm. That's probably a one-hit KO, right? It is, yeah. Uh, so the switch I was thinking about, like, going into Torkoal would have been really nice for us there, but I honestly still don't think this is too bad. Like, trading Whimsicott for Dusclops means I get a free switch in into Torkoal now, which means I can just max the Charizard. So, I'll take that. Let's see what my opponent brings in in the back. Um, there's Indeedee, which I don't think really comes out here, because there's no redirection on that. There's Urshifu, so that's Urshifu that does end up coming out. Okay, uh, I'm not too worried about that, quite frankly. Because what is stopping me now from just maxing Charizard, going for Max G-Max into Porygon, and yawning into Urshifu? I can even just body press that, right? Or even just Heat Wave. Um, I actually don't know what would be stronger between body press right now and um, Heat Wave. But Heat Wave can miss. It's probably Heat Wave, but I don't want the chance of missing, so I think I'm content to just max Wildfire into Porygon, which I think would knock out in Sun here and just body press into Urshifu, so I think we're in pretty good shape here. So that's the nice thing of Dusclops, right? We force our opponent to target that slot down, and they needed to respect it because they had no Trick Romancer, basically. But in doing so, we get a free... like. That's why Whimsicott not being Focus Sash was really good for us there, because if you're Sashed, I can't knock you out unless I max the Charizard. Or I guess one play I could go is Tyranitar and then Heat Wave, which is an interesting uh, solution around Focus Ash. So it's not like I had no answers whatsoever, but yeah. G-Max Charizard just comes out here, putting on a lot of pressure immediately. Porygon Max Guards, but that's fine. I don't think Urshifu is really doing anything that scares me that much here. So it's a relatively obvious Max Guard, but it's okay. Wicked Blow did more than I expected, though, I have to say. Um... But I think it's fine to play it safe here, right? Because I can still just knock out Porygon this next turn. So my question is whether they opt for a double protect, which actually could be really frustrating if they get it. So if I want to read into the double protect, I can just target the Urshifu instead, and I have one more turn of Dynamax left as well. So the question here is, two-thirds of the time, I just win the game by targeting Porygon Z. One-third of the time, though, Porygon Protect gets the double off. If they go for the double, I really think they should, honestly, in this position. But if I mispredict it, that would also be very bad. I think I'm just going to play it safe here, um, as much as it pains me to. Oh, they actually switch out. Okay. What can you really switch into? Cinderace? Yep. That's fine. This honestly might still just pick up a one-hit KO. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, <laughs> uh, Charizard is so good, dude. Okay, nice. Yeah, I, I think the better play there is to go for the double protect. I don't think switching really accomplishes very much. Because conserving Porygon is not really what you want here right now, right? It's more about wasting another attack from Charizard's max. So, I'm glad my opponent didn't end up going for the double, so we end up coming out of the turn. Uh you know, in a really good spot. So we should just KO the Urshifu now. It's a 2v1 against the Porygon, and I have Focus Sash on Tyranitar, so nice. I figured the Sash was on the Urshifu, which is why I didn't bother going for the Heat Wave anyway. Like, might as well not risk any misses. Um, but nice max card the last turn. I think this turn, my opponent's best place to just go for the double, which is why I was thinking heavily about attacking. But the thing is, if they don't go for the double and they just go for a max strike, we kind of just lose off that most likely. So 
I was like, even if you get the double, at least I like, KO the Urshifu, and then it's a 2v2, right, with Porygon um, and the Cinderace against Tarantar Torkoal, to which I would probably then protect Torkoal and then Rock Slide, but now we can just freely win with Body Press and Super Power. So, nice. Yeah, even though Dusclops went down turn one, totally fine. Torkoal actually dodges the Hyper Beam too, but not that it really matters because Super Power just KOs here. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to bring Tyrant on the late game. Uh, I guess if we had Venusaur, this end game would have been a little bit scarier. Although with Assault Vest, like the thing is that uh, Porygon, once you lose Dynamax, you normally get one more really powerful attack off, and that's pretty it, right? So that's pretty much it. So you get a Hyper Beam off, but then what do you do really afterwards? Um, so Dustlops was pretty much used as like a pseudo follow me in this game, and yeah, the Salad Berry I'm just really curious about on Whimsicott. That is not an item I've really ever seen on it, but it's cool. Um, of course, you can only have the Focus Sash on one Pokemon, right? So the pre like presumption is that it, assumption is that it has uh, Focus Sash on the Urshifu. Really cool team. Our opponent's also really highly ranked here. So let's see. They've also got Sun, but they've got Crocodile, Toxtricity, Bisharp. So anytime I see Dragable Bisharp, the first thing I'm thinking is I have to counter Max Airstream plus, um, you know, like Assurance. This is a tough matchup, I gotta say. I could just go Venusaur under Sun, right? <laughs> mm, Tyranitar looks good here, but I mean, Bisharp's still gonna hurt. <sighs> Can't really guarantee Trick Room going up either, which is scary. Like, this is where, like, Yawn Torkoal might actually be really valuable. If I just lead Torkoal. If I lead Torkoal, what do I want to pair it with? Venusaur or Charizard? Hmm. Because with Torkoal Charizard, I can just go for a Yawn with Torkoal Turn 1. So Torkoal Charizard, Venusaur, Tyranitar, I'm thinking. I don't like Gyarados into this matchup, considering the only thing I'm really intimidating is the Crocodile. Like, obviously Bishop is Defiant, there's the Clear Body on the Dragapult. It's really tough to get Dustlops going in this game, because there's just so many powerful attacks coming from my opponent. You have super effective attacks coming from Dragapult and Bisharp. Uh, and then even just the fire type boosted attacks do a lot of damage. So by leading with Sun here, because we're using the unconventional uh, Torkoal set, like I can pressure with Yawn. The only thing I'm worried about is my opponent also leads Tar uh, Charizard, and then like we lose a speed tie turn one. That's my one fear. Let's see what they opt for. Charizard Bisharp. Okay, that's not great. Uh. But maybe it's not terrible either, because I can just switch out into Tyranitar turn 1, actually. Hmm. I could switch Charizard into Tyranitar and yawn the opposing Charizard. It's actually really tempting. Unless you double up onto Torkoal. I don't think that's likely, though. I mean, if we can shut down Charizard, which should Dynamax turn one, I think we really win this game. So I'm going to go for this play turn one. It's a little bit risky, because I'm risking Max Airstream into Latorkoal and then, like, a Assurance onto that slot as well. So it's really a question of how much my opponent respects Torkoal. If we get this Yawn off and my opponent does Dynamax turn one, it's very good for us. Should be Charizard maxing here. Let's see. Either way, I mean, Tyranitar matches up pretty good offensively against what my opponent brought. I'm thinking you want to Airstream in this position. Yep, it's G-Max Zard. It's even better if we see Air Slash go into my, my Charizard slot instead, which my opponent might have wanted to go for. Like, maybe they just wanted to Airstream and Assurance to Charizard. Okay, so there's Airstream to no one's surprise. Nice. Oh, that's so good. Okay, huge. This just means my opponent only gets two turns of Dynamax, and then, like, the first turn they don't get anything off, basically, and this next turn I can just double protect, right? Yep, there's the Assurance. Perfect. 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 Alright, that, that was, like, a dream turn. Beautiful. Okay, they might consider switching Charizard out here, then, which means we'll have the Dynamax advantage. Um... It's safe to just double protect here. I think it's probably best to do so. Although, actually, protecting and then sacking Tyranitar here also seems fine to me, because I don't really need Tyranitar at this point. Like, I needed it for that turn one. Now, we're in great shape. 
So just protecting and going for like a superpower is pretty interesting here. Or a rock slide is fine too, if they stay in with Charizard and don't KO Tyranitar. Okay, they're gonna stay in with Charizard, which means Charizard's definitely falling asleep. Even if Tyranitar goes down here, I'm fine, because it means they're free switching for me. All right, they're gonna correctly go for Overgrowth. That's fine. Unless, yeah, I mean, do we see a Life Orb on turn one? I actually don't remember. If it's Life Orb, <laughs> or sorry, uh, if it's Lumberry, that would be sad. But I, I think sacrificing Tyranitar here is honestly fine to get a free switch in. He's not Life Orb. Wait, is it Lum? There's no way, right? Oh my goodness. If he's actually Lum, that'd be sick. And not great for me. I don't think I've seen Lumzard in a minute. Oh my goodness, it actually is. Wow. Oh, that's bad. But it's still two turns of their Dynamax, so it's not like the end of the world. Um, huh. I really didn't expect that. Wow. Uh, I guess that's why my opponent led that as well. So I should have protected with Tyranitar, I guess, to cover for the Lum option. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my Charizard. The thing is, Assurance is still putting on so much pressure, right? My opponent can just go for Airstream Assurance into Charizard right now. The Max Guard is really obvious on Charizard right now, though. The other question is whether Airstream Assurance actually KOs us without a Life Orb, without Sun either. It might not. It might not. I think I'm gonna go for another, uh, I mean, would I rather have Torkoal or Venusaur? Probably Torkoal, right? So, I mean, the safest play is probably switch in Venusaur. Oh no, but then I would turn on the Sun from my opponent's Charizard. Max. Wildfire to get rid of Bisharp. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think about Lum. So I thought we were good after turn one. So that was not the case. Shame. Nice. Nice nicely done on my opponent's sense. So the question is where's the life orb and the answer is Dragapult, right? Because it like on that team it makes a ton of sense. It's not like you can really self-activate your weakness policy. But this Charizard Bisharp lead is very oppressive. That being said, we will have a Dynamax Charizard. Uh, for two extra turns relative to our opponent. We'll have, you know, uh, the G-Max effect off as well. Okay, they're off for Airstream. They did correctly target in a Charizard, but this might actually be okay. Uh, I mean, I would think we survive Assurance here, but maybe that's a little bit greedy to think about. Max Guard would have been huge. Yeah, we survived, but not by very much. I think my opponents played this game really, really nicely. Maybe I needed to risk it on the max guard switch out, because if we max guard and switch out there, like, we probably just win the game. Because, like, then I have a full power Charizard for the subsequent turns. <sighs> now, what's interesting is that this Venusaur has Weather Ball and it's Assault Vest, right? So I can actually go for Weather Ball to KO the opposing Charizard. Okay, Bishop faints. Which would actually be really cool. Um... Max Guard Weather Ball is actually what I'm thinking about right now. It's just whatever comes in is obviously putting on a lot of offensive pressure as well, but maybe the Assault Vest can carry us here. It's gonna be Dragapult. So like, you can just easily go for what, Dragon Darts Heat Wave here? I think I have to Max Guard Weather Ball to stand a chance here, honestly. So let's see if Weather Ball can come up huge for us. I'm gonna Weather Ball Charizard and Guard. Oops. I really wanted a Max Guard last turn too, but I thought uh, I would lose too much if my opponent just doubled up onto the Venusaur slot. It's actually Blast Burn, but Venusaur dodges it. That's huge. And Dragon Claw ends up going to Charizard. I assume that would have KO'd us, but I, I do want to do that damage calc after this because this it is Assault Vest Bulky Venusaur. So Weather Ball comes up huge and knocks out Charizard. Dragon Claw and Dragapult as well, which is pretty interesting. Uh, it's obviously a very fortunate dodge, but it's the only play we could have really gone for. Okay. Even with the Solvest, I don't know if we survive, honestly. Um, I'll run the calc after this game, because I honestly am really curious. But let's focus on winning the game right now. The Lum was huge. My opponent made the correct double up onto the Charizard um, when I could have max guarded as well, so nicely done there. Crocodile is my opponent's last one, so I think we should be good here, actually. 
Uh, because now what I can do is switch Charizard out into Torkoal and just Leaf Storm the Crocodile. Yeah. So we probably get bailed by a Blast Burn Mist there, which is unfortunate. I mean, that's the thing with Charizard, even strongest fire type attacks, or all the strongest ones are Slightly Inaccurate and Heat Wave Overheat and Blast Burn. It's all, what, 90? But I do think my opponent has played this better than me. The Lumberry just came up huge on Charizard. Without that Lum, I think we honestly win this game on turn two. But the Lum is huge, and I, I should have double protected to account for it because, yeah, um, I didn't even think about it until I realized, hey, they're staying in. They probably have Lum. <laughs> It's Rindo. Okay, that's cool. Grassy Terrain is up, though, so let's see if this is still a KO. That is so strong. Wow. Okay, nice. Yeah, this is exactly why you want uh, G Max Zard in the late game, because now, like, I'm just guaranteed all these uh, turns of, uh, you know, the G Max effect as well, which is so nice. So, I mean, Weather Ball is the one thing we needed to have a chance of winning this one, which is why this Venus set is super interesting. Um,. So, yeah, I mean, there's not much Dragon Pool can really do here. We can just switch Venusaur out to reset the drops. Go out into Charizard, which is going to faint anyway, and then just yawn into the Dragon Pool. So I do want to do the Calcon Blast Burn onto the Venusaur. I'm thinking it's still a knockout, to be honest. But my opponent didn't have Life Orb and Sun wasn't up, so maybe there's a chance we survived it. Um, so I bet you are curious. I'm definitely very curious. And once again, it's really important to know whether you need the RNG to win. Because if that was like a guaranteed survival, then I actually felt pretty good about, you know, the outcome of everything. But I'm thinking that's going to be a knockout. So let's just quickly check. Um, so we have the Assault Vest. There. Blast Burn. Yeah, I don't... It's, it's like a, it's a roll, but it's very heavily in their favor, I believe. Uh, I do want to double check the Venusaur's EV spread, but I don't think it's actually very bulky. So, yeah, I think we definitely needed that um, to have a chance of winning. I, I didn't even know if they had Blast Burn, to be honest. So I was thinking, oh, we can survive like a Heat Wave uh, plus like another attack. But because they had Blast Burn, we were, we, that was pretty much our only uh, out. Um, okay, we're up going against a Rain team. I think our opponent definitely played better than us. Um, I'm not sure where we could have really improved too much other than protecting Tyranitar in that second turn. I'll focus on analyzing that after team preview here. Um... So I think that is a good game to analyze, but Rain plus Duraludon, this, you know, looks pretty close to what my first Rain team was with four of the six same Pokemon with the Duraludon, Rillaboom, Polykindra, but then there's Incineroar and Urshifu, which I think is probably a stronger variant uh, compared to what I was using. So Rain is really interesting because I think Assault Vest Venusaur looks insanely good here. So much to the point where I want to just lead it. Um... Venusaur, and I probably want to, I want to bring double weather, I think, with Torkoal and Tyranitar, especially because we have the Sash on Tyranitar. Venusaur Charizard's interesting, right, because I can just switch out into Torkoal turn one. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, like, Gyarados I don't think really does very much here, and I, I don't really feel the need to, like, set up Trick Room in this game, because I think ideally we want Venusaur and Sun. So there are a couple things to watch out for in this match. Kingdra, a little bit scary, but with the Assault Vest, you know, we can at least take a hit. We can boost our Spideff through Max Quake. And if we change the weather and we're able to outspeed Kingdra in the subsequent turn, that would be huge. What's interesting is they have a Rillaboom. They set up terrain for us. That's obviously really good for Venusaur. So let's see. Um, I think it's a scary team for sure, but I think Venusaur, if we play it correctly, should have a very good matchup against everything. Give me Kingdra and Cinderar, okay? So, this doesn't work out super well for me in the sense that turn one, my opponent can freely switch Incineroar out because Charizard's faster. So, that would have been a reason to actually bring Dusclops solely for the turn one Weather War. I mean, I want to max and just Vine Lash Kingdra turn one because I know with the Assault Vest, I can take a max Hurricane anyway. Um. Max, Vine Lash. And we can chip away with Air Slash or Scorching Sands. Scorching Sands into Incineroar is actually interesting in case they parting shot. I think you should just switch out turn one here. I mean, if we KO Kingdra, we win, right? 
So let's go for it onto Kingdra, because if we get a burn, what I can do the next turn is just switch Charizard out. I think most of the times here you hard switch and Sinnoh out, but you could also go for a fake out or parting shot. Looks like they are going to go for the latter. Which makes sense, I guess, because if I switch in Torkoal, then you can just parting shot and then ha win the Weather War immediately. I guess a Flare Blitz here could be really scary. Like, if you just max Airstream and Flare Blitz into Venusaur, that would be pretty problematic for us, I think. Yeah, actually, especially because you get the speed boost off first. Maybe I should have thought about that. Uh, I don't think I respected that play enough. Whether that's a KO... I mean, it should be a KO, honestly. Like, I think it would be a KO. Hmm. What would my safest play have been there, then? I shouldn't have led Charizard. I think that was a misplay. Oh, no, they're just gonna go for Fake Out. Okay, I think we're fine, then. This is... I, I will take this trade off any day. Oh, they even go for the Geyser. Huh. Okay. Wait, why is Kingdra outspeeding us there? Is this Charizard not max speed? It might be modest. I mean, either way, that's a really good turn for us, I would say. Uh, because Venusaur doesn't end up taking any damage, and we get the Vine Lash off, which is enough for it to KO. And I think, once again, Venusaur kind of just stomps on the entire team. Ah, oh, that's a critical hit, okay. Um, don't know if the crit mattered, because we were going to get two hits of the residual damage anyway. Getting that residual is just so nice. Uh, I don't think we switch in Torkoal here. We bring in Tyranitar, actually, for sure. Yeah. Because now my opponent feels inclined to probably switch into Politoed once again for weather control. But then, this is why I wanted double weather in this game, right? Um, because it just pressures my opponent to keep up the pressure with weather. Um, yeah, I'm just double checking the Charizard speed here. Wait, did we flinch and I just missed it? Because I thought the Kingdra went before us, which I wasn't expecting. Huh, Okay. I'm um, just, yeah, I gotta double check the Venusaur investment because I was curious if we have any investment. 121 Spadef. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna click Rock Slide right now. Max Blake Rock Slide seems fine. Let's target Kingdra to play it safe. You should switch out into Politoed here. Yep. Uh, I mean, I was really close to Vine Lashing that slot, but this this trade off is fine, right? Like, you either max Hurricane into Venusaur or you max Geyser into Tyranitar, both which aren't that problematic. Sorry, I keep saying max Hurricane. I mean, max Airstream. Dude, Assaultus Venusaur is so good. What in the world? <laughs> Took that with. I mean, that's a three hit KO, so yeah, even if Venusaur got targeted turn one, we would have been fine. Fortunately, my opponent, uh, you know, put the pressure on Charizard instead of Venusaur. I went for the Quake here, um, for the Spadef boost. Yeah, that's enough for a knockout too. Okay, nice. Perfect. So I think that wins us the game, actually, because, uh, Venusaur, like I said, solos my opponent's entire team with the Assault Vest. There's pretty much nothing that puts on pressure against it. Now I win the Weather War too, because I can just switch out into Torkoal. Of course, my opponent can switch out into Politoed, but I still have the Focus Sash on Tyranitar. I've got a Special Defense boost on this and Venusaur. Rock Slide does... 45% and then you get the extra effect from Vine Lash as well. So, I mean, we had a we had some tough games against Gmax Venusaur yesterday, so now we are using it and it's just such a good Pokémon. I love the Assault Vest set here though. It just makes it so much bulkier. Like <laughs> the fact that we took less than 50% from a super effective max move is really impressive. That being said, we all know that Kingdra's output is not very good offensively, but still got to say I was impressed. Okay, so Urshifu comes out, uh, it's the fighting variant, should probably switch Politoed out here, Vine Lash into Urshifu and just switching out into Torkoal seems fine, Tyranitar will win if I knock out Urshifu and I win the Weather War, right, so as soon as I KO Urshifu, which should be this turn, through Vine Lash plus the Residual, yep, probably switches out. I could have gone for the G-Max move onto the Incineroar switch out last turn, but I was like, I'd rather knock out the Kingdra here, plus Rock Slide covers for any switches. So, I, w winning the Weather War honestly isn't that important as soon as Kingdra goes down, because now Venusaur just, like I said, beats my opponent's entire team. So, I wanted to switch in Torkoal this turn, just to ensure that Venusaur attacks first before the Urshifu, so 
even something like a choice ban crit doesn't KO it. And as soon as we get this attack off, that should just be the game, because this means the Yoshifu should faint after the residual this turn. Yep, perfect. Uh, and they're going to opt to close combat too. Perfect. So this game pretty much couldn't have gone any better. Okay. And then you can just see once again just how good the residual effect of Vine Lash can be. So that's Urshifu down. Insin takes a lot. And now Tyranitar just comes in and clicks Rock Slide, right? So my opponent wins the Weather War this turn. I guess what's interesting is now I don't want to switch in Tyranitar because I know I have the Focus Ash in attack. Um, and there's still one more turn of the max effect too, which is so nice, because I think that puts the Incineroar definitely in Rockslide KO range, and then Polytoad will be pretty close to getting KO'd from it. So I think here the safest play, with Rain being up, and with Tyranitar, like, we don't want to just carelessly switch in Tyranitar and get crit by Skull. Like, Skull crit burn would be really bad here, right? Especially because, like, Tyranitar is the bulk of the damage, so... You know what would be really sick right now? Weather Ball into the Incineroar. <laughs> I am going to Weather Ball and Body Press here. I expect the Fake Out to go into uh, Venusaur, but if it doesn't, and we get an another super effective Weather Ball off this game, that'd be so hype. Polly's protecting, which is even better for us. Let's see. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good. Oh, I was going to say goodbye. I did not faint. He actually just snarls. Okay. Um, Given that it survived that, is it a Cell Vest? It is a super effective attack in rain. Nice. Torkoal weeds up its berry, and then we just body press. I mean, this team is just so solid and consistent, right? You give a player like James this team, it's no surprise he was able to get number one on the ladder. Um, there's just so many tricks and options and tools. Okay, nice. Yeah, so Polytoad's obviously going to faint after this next turn. I just want to quickly double check the Venusaur spread um, to see what our odds were against the Charizard last game because, yeah, we were obviously not in a very commanding position. So 159 HP, which is not very much investment, and then 121 Spadef. So it's not bulky at all. So I think that Blast Burn KOs us 69% uh, of the time, or 68.8% of the time to be exact. Um, so we got pretty lucky getting that avoid for sure. Um, so we take those, but I, I needed to have played better in that game for sure as well. Okay, nice. I'm uh, just going to leave Storm and Body Press here, and that will be it. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, like I said in team preview, Venusaur just beat the entire team, right? So I feel really good about how I played the first and third game. The second one, the lead was really tough, honestly. And I, I think I needed to just have a better lead. Um, against, I, I was trying to respect Charizard Bisharp and Dragon Ball Bisharp, and I, I honestly don't think I would have changed too much about how I played that, because Pokemon choice-wise, I think I brought the right Pokemon, there's no way I could bring Gyarados or, uh, Dustlops into that, so, I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna play a fourth one today, too, because, yeah, it's, it's a fun team, we're featuring it for the first time, so, why not? Um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, and the dynamic of that second matchup, the Lum makes it super hard, I... Turn one was great. Okay, actually, there's two plays, right? Uh, the, the first play was protecting Tyranitar when my opponent went for the max overgrowth because by protecting there, I at least like, scout out for whether you have the Lumberry. And then what I can do the next turn is you can't KO both of my Pokemon. You have to double up onto the Torkoal to KO it. So that means I either get a Rock Slide off or another Yawn off. And the other play I could have made was reading into my opponent doubling up onto Charizard when I was thinking of max guarding. <laughs> Similar teams here <laughs> for this last game. Okay. How in the world does this mirror work, man? Um, this is so tricky. Hmm. We even brought Gyarados at all today, but I don't know if that's the answer. Venusaur? Venusaur's residual effect is really good. Like, part of me wants to leech Charizard Venusaur with the pivot out into Torkoal. I'm just thinking what the most consistent lead option is. What I'm thinking is Charizard, Venu, Torkoal, Tyranitar. I don't like Gyarados much here. I'm only really intimidating the opposing Tyranitar. Lum does help against the opposing Torkoal, but my opponent knows this team because we're obviously using the same rental here. So, let's see. Um, mirror matches can always be scary because of the threat of speed ties. And in a match like this, I think it's very likely speed ties end up being relevant. Potential weather ball predictions can also be very, very interesting in this one. Uh, for example, going for Weather Ball, switching Tyranitar onto uh, the opposing Charizard. So, alright. 
It's obviously a 50-50 matchup. Let's see what Pokemon my opponent brings. I don't think I came up with the best lead here in the short amount of time we had, so I gotta think about it, like, what the most optimal combination is. But, uh, eager to play this one out. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I bet he has the same bad Pokemon in the bag, too. What do we do here, man? What do we do? Surely the Charizard Max is on the opposing end, right? We know there's no Sleep Powder to worry about. I mean, I want to target the opposing Charizard. I, like, I think Airstreaming is the best course of action turn one for the speed boost. Because we outpace our opponent, that's huge. Okay, I'm actually going to double up on Charizard turn one. Okay. If Torkoal switches in here, that'd be so good. It's going to be Gyarados. Oh, so they didn't bring the same Pokemon. Now, Gyarados is very interesting, but I don't mind that. Um, I, I thought heavily about switching Venusaur out into Tyranitar turn one, but I think I'd rather just get Tyranitar in for free. Especially if they don't end up Airstreaming here. Can we survive a max airstream on Venusaur? I don't think so, right? Actually, wait, I mean, it's it's weaker than Blast Burn, right? So actually, maybe, because Blast Burn itself isn't even a guaranteed KO. Because Blast Burn is what, base 150? Max airstream should be 130? Or is it 140 on Charizard? I think it's 130, right? Okay. Uh, I'm happy to see Gyarados in here for my opponent, to be honest, because, yeah. Like, now, because I know I have Tyranitar in the back, even if Venusaur goes down and Tyranitar comes in for free, that's great. Nice, we even go first, too, which means we get the Sludge Bomb off, too, before they move. And that's 50% of damage. Is that a crit? No, not even. Man, Charizard is just so strong, dude. Okay, so we get lucky winning the speed tie there because I'm sure the Charizard was targeting my Venusaur slot. That's almost enough for a KO. No poison. They're going to Airstream as well into the Venusaur. Okay. Does go down. But, I mean, that's fine, right? Can't I just bring in Tyranitar now? I bring in Tyranitar and just Airstream Rock Slide? And if we win the speed tie, that probably just wins us the game immediately? Yeah, I think we bring in Tyranitar. Uh, what if we lose the speed tide? Then my opponent can airstream waterfall into the Charizard. And that would be bad. Oh, but Charizard's already gotten the speed boost. Oh no, Gyarados got it as well because they switched in, right? Huh. Yeah, I mean, this is still scary. I don't... What if I what if I just rock slide here? Like the play I'm actually thinking about is max guard rock slide, but my if my opponent makes a crazy good prediction and doubles up onto Tyranitar, that would be really bad. It's just that I think here you airstream waterfall into Charizard. But maybe my opponent respects Tyranitar enough as a threat. Uh, I went for the G-Max onto Gyarados, which is not the correct play. Oh, but they Max Guard. Wait, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, if I if I just I, I went for Airstream, though, we would have just won instantly. Because uh, then Tyranitar should outspeed Gyarados. But I get the Residual effect off now, which is really important. Uh, and Charizard's, you know, still taking Life Orb plus Sand Residual, too. Yeah, they go for Waterfall into Tyranitar. Okay, nice play. So they were predicting the Max Guard from my Charizard's end. Or they were predicting my Charizard's... Oh, but we flinch! Oh, no, 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 no. That's why I needed to Airstream. I, I wanted the Residual effect, but the Residual effect was not needed right now in this state in the game. Oh, okay. Question now is whether I Max Guard on Charizard this turn and Rock Slide. That's a bad flinch. Um, I really needed to Airstream that last turn. That was such a blatant misplay. But time was counting down. I just don't want to risk the speed tie once again, because I think now you double up onto my Charizard. But you have to respect Rantar Rock Sliding here still. Uh, 
Okay, I'm just gonna go for Airstream Rock Slide here. Let's see. <sighs> okay, we end up going first, so. Uh, was the correct target Charizard there? Yeah, I think so. We've been very lucky this game, though, to go first with the Charizard. Um, I mean, we obviously got flinched there, so it's not like we got entirely lucky, but I'd say the speed ties were, you know, pretty advantageous here. Okay, Airstream and a Charizard. It's a lot of damage, but we'll survive the turn, and now I have uh, Torkoal in the back, and I have the speed boost. I think there's a Mosquito around feasting on me right now. We know there's Venusaur in the back. We know it's Assault Vest, but that doesn't really matter because I have uh, the Torkoal in the back that I can switch into. I don't I don't like how I played this after turn one. I, I think, like, the fact my opponent brought... Oh, but the, hmm, they will be faster now. But I think my Torkoal should just win this for us at this point. Um, oh, we're at plus two speed on Charizard, too. Never mind, we're good. Because we should just have speed the Venusaur and just go for a Heat Wave here. I think winning the speed tie last turn was really uh, a big deal, though. I, you know, I thought that was what it was going to come down to, but it didn't even need to come down to that if I just went for the correct airstream play. There's no point to G Max Wildfire in this game, I think, because I do more damage just through airstreaming and giving Tyranitar the speed boost. So I'm just going to Heat Wave and Rock Slide here. Yeah. Because we should be faster. It, it might have been better to actually switch Tyranitar out there. Um. I mean, if Heatwave doesn't miss, I think it just KOs Venusaur, because Sun is up. So we have Solar Power plus the Sun Boost. And then Rock Slide's just single target onto Torkoal. But I think switching Tyranitar out there is definitely the better play. Um, because we want to get the Rock Slides off. Uh, and change the weather as well. Although we know that it has uh, Body Press. Okay, if we missed Heatwave there, we actually would have lost. So that's what it came down to, but it can access nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I do think Tyranitar was the correct Pokemon to have in this game, though. Like, Gyarados doesn't really offer very much, so... It felt like I had an advantage because I brought, you know, a, a better Pokemon into this matchup, but I didn't utilize that advantage fully. Like, we should have won the game on turn two if I just went for Airstream into Gyarados, so uh, a, a slight misplay there meant that there was still room for my opponent to win if, you know, uh, I they win the speed five the subsequent turn. So uh, that's why mirror matches are, you know, just not fun to really play often because of the potential speed ties. And in this game, it does, in this set specifically, it does feel like super, super relevant. Um... But we end up getting pretty fortunate and uh, do win the speed ties. I'm not sure we really needed Venusaur to end up getting that Sludge Bomb off anyway. Um, yeah, let me think. Because I think another attack would have KO'd the Charizard. Like, two Airstreams KO's the Charizard anyway, so that Sludge Bomb actually ends up being pretty useless. But I, I, I don't think I played this game perfectly, um, but I did learn some valuable things in the mirror. I do think in the mirror, Charizard, Venu, Torkoal, and... Um, Tyranitar feel really, really strong. It's just a question of what order to bring them in. I'm not sure if I led the best, um, but I think because my opponent didn't have Tyranitar in their back and we did, that was super good. But yeah, I, I think because Charizard is the Pokemon that Dynamax is so often in this mirror, it's often going to be speed ties between the two because it is the fastest Pokemon, and the only way you outspeed the Charizard is through by Dynamaxing Venusaur or G-Maxing it. Do you really want to max that because it is, you know, uh, still going to take so much damage from the opposing Charizard? So yeah. That is going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Once again, please go check out James Beck. I have linked him in the description below. Go watch him. He is such a good, fantastic VGC creator. And once again, truly one of the best players in the world. And had maybe the one of the best, if not like the best season from a non roar champion last season. Like It was truly an insane run. So thanks again to James for providing this team. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And don't forget to answer that question of the day. All right. Peace.